Hi, this is the ninth lesson in our series about brushes in Photoshop. We've been working in Photoshop CS4 because brushes changed in CS5. So far we've covered everything in the brushes panel, so if you've been following along, you now know what all the parameters do and how to make a brush behave pretty much however you want it to. If you missed those lessons, there are links in the description for this one. Now finally, with all that knowledge under your belt, we're ready to make your own brush from scratch. We're going to start with a captured brush tip shape. When you define a brush, you define the whole preset, not just the tip shape. So you can set all the parameters up before you get the dab, but you can't see what you're doing if you do that. So we're going to capture the tip shape and then set up the rest. Just to make sure we're starting from scratch, we're going to go over here to the Brushes panel. If you don't happen to have it open, of course, you can go to Window, Brushes, or you can tap the F5 key to open it. And then we're going to go to the menu at the top right hand corner and we're just going to go to Clear Brush Controls and that will zero all of this stuff out and empty it all. Make sure that the flow and opacity are both set to 100% and the mode is normal up here in the options bar. And now we're ready to start. By the way, you might save time if you make all of this stuff into a tool preset. By the end of the lesson, you'll know how to do that. So, when you capture a tip, the tip opacity is based on the value of the pixels you're capturing. So if we're going to have an opaque brush, then we need to have black for the foreground color. So we're going to get that by tapping D. Look over here in the swatches. When I tap D, it automatically changes to black foreground and white background. And now I'm going to make the tip shape using the shape panel because shapes are just easiest. And I'm going to go ahead and use this butterfly shape and make sure that the mode is set to fill with pixels because you can't make a brush tip shape from a path or from a shape layer. You make shapes with those things, not brush tips. So we have that. All I have to do is hold down the shift key to constrain the motion and pull out a nice big shape. Now if I want to move it around, I can hold down the space bar and center it up. The reason that you want a big one is because you can always use a brush at a smaller size than the one that you sampled, but if you try to use it at a larger size, you can run into pixelation problems. So start out with a sample that's nice and big. And when you like it, let go, and there's your shape. Now all you have to do is tap M, get the marquee tool, and draw a nice big marquee that entirely encloses the thing you want to have for your brush tip. And when you see the marching ants, you just go up to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and you'll get a dialog box that lets you name it. Now I suggest that you name it something that lets you know that this is just the sample with no parameters. So I'm going to call this Sampled, whoops, Sampled Butterfly and click OK. And did you see it just show up there? Just like that, now we have a new brush tip shape. So I'm going to drop the selection with Command D, that's Control D on a PC. I'm going to hide this layer and go up to that one. And if I tap B, I'll get my brushes and I can click on the new brush tip shape here. And if I just click once, I have my brush just exactly the way that I sampled it. So I'm going to undo that and let's do some things with the parameters here. First, I'm going to reduce the size. Let's get down between 50 and 60 pixels around in there someplace. And I'm going to increase the spacing so that we see separate little butterflies, about like that. And go to Shape Dynamics, and let's put in a nice healthy size jitter, but let's get rid of the control here so it's sort of random. And let's set the minimum to 30 some percent so we don't wind up with any tiny little butterflies. Give it a maximum angle jitter. We can leave the rest of this alone. Let's add some scattering, quite a bit on both axes. Not too much, but a nice healthy amount. And now let's add some color dynamics. Let's put the hue jitter up to around 50%. Now I could do more, but then I wouldn't have time to show you how to save it. So we're going to leave it like that. And let's just see how it looks here. Oops, it's black. Let's change the color, undo that. There, that's about what I wanted. So, if I'm happy with this brush, I can just go ahead and use it, but if I want to be able to use it later in other documents and other places and other times, I'd like to save it. Now, there are two different ways to save a brush. You can save it as a brush preset, or you can save it as a tool preset. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, so let's look at both of them. We're gonna start out with saving it as a brush preset. So in the brushes window, in the menu over here on the right, you just go down to new brush preset, and that will open a dialog that lets you name it. Now, I strongly suggest that you pick meaningful names and consistently use whatever naming convention makes sense to you. That'll make it a lot easier to find the brush you want months or years from now. So since this one uses a butterfly dab, I'm going to call it Butterfly, and it's a scatter brush. 
So I'm going to say scatter and I change the hue. So I'm going to put in hue and then I'm going to click OK. And now I have it saved as a brush preset. Now to save a tool preset, if you happen to have your tool preset panel open, you can just save it from there. But what I usually do is go up to the little tool preset widget here in the top left hand corner of the options bar and save it from there. So you just go to the flyout menu and you choose new tool preset. And once again, that opens a dialog that lets you name it. Now I know it's a tool, so I don't need that in there. And um, as you can see, you can also include the color. So I'm going to include the color and I'm going to make a note of that by calling this brush butterfly scatter hue blue. Most of the rest of this stuff is in there because we already saved the brush. So if you're saving them both, you'll do that. And then click OK. And now there we have a tool preset. Now, what are the differences between the two? Well, the main difference is that if you have saved something as a brush preset, then you can use that in any tool that uses brushes, like your eraser, your clone stamp, your dodge and burn, anything that uses a brush, you can use that. Let's take a look. We're going to go over here to this particular image and let's choose the clone stamp and um, go to brush presets and choose the new brush preset. And then I just hold down the option key and click to set my sampling point. And if I go back here, and let's make a new layer and hide that one, I can now paint with my other image and this brush, all scattered and nice the way that I had it. Or if I choose the eraser tool, I can go back here and I can choose the same brush tip preset from the erasers, and I can cut little butterfly shaped holes in my picture and show the sky that's underneath. So you can do all of that fun stuff. Now, if you have a tool preset, you automatically go to that tool. So right now we're in the eraser. If we uncheck the current tool only so we can see all of our tools and go down here and get our brush butterfly scatter blue, then if I click that, notice how I'm instantly changed to brush. And if I start painting, I have my brush with all of those presets and all of the colors and everything else. If I go back here, and let's make another new layer, and let's say that I'm using the multiply color mode and I have my opacity and my flow way down, then I get this sort of a nifty pastel kind of brush. Oh, and let's turn on airbrush too, so that it can build up some as we hold the pen still. And now if I go to my tool, and I choose my um, butterfly. Notice that the mode goes back to normal, the opacity and the flow return to 100%, and the airbrush is disabled again. And when I paint, I get exactly what I started with. So that's the difference. Which one you use depends on what you need. If you want to be able to use the brush with all kinds of other tools, then save it as a brush preset. If you want to automatically return to the brush tool, or if you want to save brush blending mode, opacity, flow, or color, then save it as a tool preset. If it's a really nice one, you might want to save it as both. Also, don't forget that like all the rest of these things, it's not really saved until you close Photoshop. So if you've put a lot of time into the brush, you might want to do that before you do anything else. And we're out of time. Next time, I'll show you more things about making brushes. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.